ABS Media Demo. ABS Media Demo. Right, um, so basically take nice simple examples. You know what you're doing, it's, it's very easy to understand, which is why I use it. We're going to run you through a network diagram example here. And it took me many years to develop this, um, this process. It's great, it's super simple. Students find it bomb proof. Uh, those that are initially struggling with getting their head around laying out um, the critical part, the network analysis diagram, the network diagram, uh, finds this way, those students find this way um, quite straightforward, quite logical. Let's have a look. Um, we've got our activities here, A through to J, and the duration in days on the right hand side. Proceeding activities, so C can't begin until A is completed. D can't begin until B and C are completed. Um, e precedes A, F precedes E. G can't get underway until F and D are completed. H can't get underway until B and C gets completed. I can't get underway until J and H are completed. And J needs to be preceded by I. So you can see that this one is quite a lot more complicated than the previous example. How do we go about laying that out? What we do is take out a piece of paper, tear them up into strips, tear these pieces of papers up into strips and um, label them activity A through to activity J or whatever activities are given to you in the exam questions. Now typically practicing this way a few times you start to get the hang of laying out the logical sequence of events but if you, t if you need to rely on this method that I'm going to show you now you, there's no problem at all for with you ripping up pieces of paper in the IB examination it's not against the rules right you can do it and you can use this practical alternative to just ruling out ruling up the network diagram what am I rambling on about here let's have a look right activities and proceeding activities there we've got our pieces of paper all nicely ripped up and, and laid out Right. We can see that A has no preceding activities and neither does activity B. So these are going to be our two starting points. J is our ending point and J is preceded by I and nothing else. Now for I to begin, it's specified there that G and H need to precede it. So you can see that we're putting our, our strips of paper just before I. C comes after A. And if we go to G, activity G, G, we can see the F and D, those activities precede G. And E is dependent on A being completed. So, by just shuffling around our strips of label paper, we have essentially got our activities laid out in the correct sequence which is brilliant and now we can just go ahead and put in our notes all 
Oh, we just head back there. So now we've got it beautifully laid out. Beautifully laid out. And when, once we've got that structure in place, then all we are doing is getting out our rulers and drawing in our arrows, activity on the top, duration on the bottom of the arrow. Now you can see with these strips of paper and with the activities labeled, it makes it very, very easy to shuffle bits of paper around. Um, you make a mistake, you're not rubbing out anything, you're not, you're not scribbling out any pen marks. All you are doing is playing around with these strips of paper until you have the correct sequence in place. And that took me years to, um, to be able to... Um, this technique to be able to pass on to students. Absolute genius. Makes it super easy. And once you've done it with this paper method uh, two or three times in practice, then it becomes much easier to just lay out the network um, following what's going on in your mind. So there we have we've there we have it. We've got the, the structure in place. And once we've got that, we are laying out our earliest start times and our latest finishing times. So what you see before you is just what we had on the preceding page. Just looking a little bit nicer. Show me. Now remember with the earliest start time, we're feeding forward to the longest route. Show me. We always start at time zero. Activity A takes eight minutes to um, complete, so the earliest start time of activity um, activity E must be eight minutes. Eight minutes for activity A, 14 minutes for activity E. The earliest start time for F is 32 days. Um, activity C was either going to be six minutes or um, or twenty. So it's a it's the longest it's the longest one. It's just rolling forward. Thirty eight plus four forty two. Show me. Earlier start time. Tick that off your list. Um, latest finishing time. We're going to roll back to find the longest route. 42 equals 42. 42 minus 4. 38 minus 3. Now remember the rule. Take the longest one. 35 minus 3. 35 minus 14 will give us the latest finishing time for activities C and B. 32 minus 10, the 10, 10 days taken for activity F to be completed. 22 days minus 14 days is the latest finishing time for activity A without anything getting delayed. And 0 must equal 0. And there we have it. All we need to go through now and is identify the critical path. And remember, we identify our critical path where the EST, the earliest start times, and the LFTs, the latest finishing times, are equal. Right. We can see that A, E, F, G, I, and J. Uh, is become the critical part. There can be no delays there, or else we delay the entire project at some stage. 
and you will be awarded a mark for having a key or you'll, you'll lose a mark for not having a key so that's what your key should look like however you are ident identifying the critical path whether it's through um, extra bolded arrows those double dash parallel lines or any other method just uh, specify that in your key